I'm coming to you from the comfort of my very own closet and I want to talk to you about something that's been laying in my heart very important. And this is the thing, that things are happening in your life and you are beginning to see the physical results of them and you're asking yourself, what is wrong? And the thing is that there's nothing wrong. It's that you're identifying wrong. I'm going to say that again. There's nothing wrong. You are just identifying wrong. There's a story about two men that were locked in a closet without a mirror. I have a mirror here. So if I look at the mirror, I can see my reflection and I can see how I look. Correct. But in this room, there was two men and they had no mirror and they were enclosed in this room, locked in this room. And they were locked in this room for a couple of days and they were given food. They were given what to eat and what to drink and so forth. And one day the man, let's call him Bob and the other man, let's call him Adam. Bob looks at Adam and Adam's face is all dirty from everything that he had been eating throughout the days. And Adam looks at Bob's face and Bob's face is completely clean. After that, Bob goes and washes his face. He washed his face off. Why did Bob clean his face when his face was clean, but yet Adam didn't wash his face when his face was the dirty face. I want you to think about that for a couple of seconds. And if you know the answer, put it in the comments. All right, this is why. Because Adam, who had the dirty face, was looking at Bob, who had the clean face. And his, refre his reflection was, I must look like Bob because Bob is clean, so therefore I am clean. However, when Bob looked at Adam and Adam's face was dirty, Bob thought the same thing. I must have a dirty face because Adam's face is dirty. So therefore, Bob went and washed his face, not having a dirty face. And what I mean by that is sometimes you are identifying with the wrong reflection. You are looking at others to tell you how you are, the status that you are in. And that makes you fall into a deception. Instead of walking righteously, you are walking unrighteously. But because you're looking at the wrong reflection to compare yourself with, you think that you are doing things appropriately when in reality, you are not doing things appropriately. And same, it's the same way the other way around. If you hang around with people that are doing things wrong, therefore you yourself are gonna feel like if you're in the wrong when you are not. And that is why who you identify with or who you allow yourself to identify with has a lot to do with your actions. That's why it goes on to say in the Bible that who you hang around with will determine your character. That's There's a saying in Spanish that says, Dime con quien te juntas y yo te diré quien eres. Or another one, el que se acuesta con perros se levanta con pulgas. I'll translate this for you. It says, tell me who you hang around with and I'll tell you who you are. And the other one was, the one that lays with dogs will get up with fleas. Who you identify with has a lot to say with your character. Now, why am I talking about this on faith therapy? What does this have to do with mental health? Everything. You see, your mindsets will be reflected with who you hang out with, who you associate with, who you call or call, quote unquote, your friends, your company that you hang out with reflects the mindsets that you yourself have. So that's why it's so important to understand that your life as a Christian ought to be different. It ought to reflect a different way of living, especially to those that you hang out with. If you hang out with an unbeliever, your life should reflect light to them and they should feel uncomfortable in their ways of living. Uncomfortable to the point that it draws them to Christ. It draws them to say, hey, why do you live so different and why do I live this way? Why is it that you are, quote unquote, more peaceful in this situation that we may both be facing, but yet your reaction is completely different than mine? You are being the light. But if you're hanging out with unbelievers and you are putting your eyes on them and you begin to see yourself like them, then 
you are not being the light that God has called us to be. You see, it's there's this great debate on should I hang around with believers or should I not have unbelieving friends? Should I be able to hang out with unbelieving people and go to lunch with unbelieving people? And you can be a big debate about this. But I'm not here to debate that. I'm here to tell you that you are supposed to be the light, whether you hang around with unbelievers, believers, religious people, Pharisees, whoever it is that you're hanging out with. You need to be the light. You ought to give a different reflection that would make them think, huh, something is off in me. I'm not looking like I'm supposed to look spiritually speaking, mentally speaking, emotionally speaking. Because when you are a believer and you stand firm in the things of God and you walk firm in the things of God, trust me, people are looking at you. People are watching your actions and your reactions. And that's why it's so important to be able to identify in a biblical perspective. Even in your conversations, you should be able to have that salt that the bible says we're the salt of the world your conversations should add value to those that you speak to to those that you impart to to those that you casually speak to it should add value they should leave that association with you they should leave that conversation they should leave that gathering feeling refreshed feeling hopeful feeling like god just spoke to them take a couple of minutes today and evaluate who are you identifying with or who is identifying with you? Because if you're a believer, you should be drawing people to Christ and not away from Christ. Something to think about.